Hello everyone! In this masterpiece of a video, I'm going to show you the new version of the Linux desktop environment, GNOME 49. Honestly, this update turned out to be a bit of a minor one, you know, although it depends on how you look at it. Anyway, the next version is an anniversary one for us, so maybe that's why this update turned out like this. Well, let's start with what immediately catches the eye, even though not many people write and say about it. The GNOME shell itself had the animation for some menus, the notification center and the quick settings changed. It looks fresh and more modern compared to what was there before, so well, why not? Continuing with the visible changes in the shell, the Do Not Disturb mode button has moved from the notifications and calendar to the quick settings, which is quite logical in principle. Media controls now appear on lock screen, if any audio or video is playing. The login screen has also been changed where the accessibility menu has been moved and visually redesigned. In general, this menu has all sorts of useful default tools that can help people with certain health issues, and not only them. For example, the on-screen keyboard is very useful if, say, your physical keyboard stops working. One of the noticeable updates, the default video player was replaced from the old totem to the new Showtime, which looks more modern and it uses GTK4 and Libadvita. In particular, it has a pretty useful feature that allows you to take a screenshot of a video frame, which gets saved to the screenshots folder. The only caveat is that there are still some issues with codecs, so I recommend installing the Flatpak version from FlatHub. It works fine in that regard. The default document viewer for PDFs in particular was also replaced. It used to be Evans, now it's Papers. It also now uses GTK4 and Libadvita, so everything is... as always. In the default file manager Nautilus, the filter menu in search has been updated. Essentially, the functionality remains the same, but now it's more convenient and modern. Among other visible changes, of course, I have to mention the new wallpapers, you can't have release without them. They added not just one new default pair, but also various others, as always, pretty good ones. Certainly, there also have been many changes under the hood that you can't see right away, and just a lot of minor changes and improvements. For example, they finally improved the performance of the software store. It seems they fixed the issue with very slow parsing of data from Flatpak repositories, like FlatHub. And so far, from my experience, it does seem to work faster. Before, it was really annoying with long waiting times for loading apps and constant freezes. Well, of course, this applies to those who install stuff via the GUI store. Default apps like Calendar, Web Browser and Maps have also been updated. The Calendar got a reorganized interface, the web browser had its own ad blocking functionality improved, along with many other minor changes, and Maps got interactive markers. Although who even uses Maps in GNOME? Image loading in GTK applications is now handled in a sandbox environment using Gleeseam for more security. Many applications now have a search feature for keyboard shortcuts. New icons were added for the state when a laptop is plugged in but not charging. In quick settings, you can now adjust the brightness of all displays when HDR is enabled. The built-in remote desktop capabilities were improved, specifically support for multi-touch input from touch screens and the ability to add virtual monitors. This might not be absolutely everything, but it's almost everything I could tell you about this release. Certainly, a lot of useful stuff was added, especially the new wallpapers, but I hope the next release will be more interesting. After all, an anniversary update is coming up. As always, thanks everyone for watching. I haven't forgotten about the second part of the video about Apps for Gnome, all in due time. Bye bye everyone.